Have you ever stepped on the scale only to see the numbers on there and your mood just plummeted because you've not made any progress? In fact, you've gained weight and you're just like, what am I doing? I'm wasting my time. What if there's a better way or a better routine for weighing in and measuring your progress? In this video, I want to take you from discouraged to empowered in regards to your weigh-in routine. Welcome back to Fit Start TV. My name's Craig Williams and today we're talking about weigh-in routine. This is part of a 5x5 program where I tackle the five most common questions I get when people are looking to kickstart fitness and weight management and also five questions that people should ask and they never do. One of them, the most common questions is, you know, how, what is the best kind of weigh-in routine for me? So today we're going to talk about that. As always, I've got a few little notes which I'm going to refer to. So if I do glance down, I'm not being rude. I'm just checking my notes, making sure I get you all the information that I'm trying to get across. Okay, so I want to take you from perhaps being obsessive about this weighing. You know, some people like, you know, they're weighing themselves multiple times a day. Now your weight does fluctuate and, and we've got to kind of define weight right from the start. Remember, weight will fluctuate based on lots of different things, okay? So what I'm going to teach you today is the best way in routine to kind of avoid those, those general fluctuations that we all have throughout the day, general fluctuations that, you know, people have because of hormonal changes. I'm mainly talking about females. Um, and general fluctuations based on food and drink that we consume kind of throughout the day. So I want to kind of avoid all that. So I want you to be more relaxed about your weighing, to understand the figure that's on the scales and not obsessive. Now, I'm sorry if my throat gets a little bit hoarse. Um, I've, I've picked up like a little bit of a cold recently. I did a big race, five marathons, five days out in Kenya. And um, I'm just back from that. And the recovery is kicking my ass. My uh, my feet are pretty sore. My body's pretty battered. My immune system is obviously a little bit depressed, and I'm just pick I've just picked up a little bit of a cold. But I'll do my best for you. And the other thing that I don't like is people like allowing this sometimes arbitrary number on these mechanical scales or these digital scales just control their mood. You know, it's like sometimes. You know, Paul would be like, oh, you know, you're really, really, you know, in a foul mood. I'm always so because I've just weighed in. You know what I mean? I'm like, fucking so what? You know, your weight can change for so many different things. What is the trend? You know, are you trending through time down? Are you trending through time staying the same? Are you trending through time and increasing slightly? You know, don't let a, a one-off figure or a little blip or something like that. Control your mood. There's enough stuff out there that's going to piss you off. You, this, you, you don't need to be pissed off because of your weighing either. Uh, and if there are people out there that have never really been taught this or considered this, then obviously this will clear it up so they, were, you know, they won't be confused about you know, the way or the suggested way um, to do it. Now, of course, there are many ways to track progress. Today, we're focusing on the scales because it's the most common. Um, but there are a million other ways. Well, a million. There are lots of other ways that you can track your progress, uh, which I will talk about in future videos. So if these are the kind of thing that you're interested in and you're interested in kickstarting fitness and weight management, then make sure you, uh, you subscribe to the channel. That will help me know that I'm on the right track, but also help get this information out there to people that really need it as well. So thank you very much. Okay, so if you don't implement a good weigh-in routine, it can increase your stress levels because you're panicking about it. You know, you can become obsessive because you find that you're starting to move the scales around the bathroom or around your bedroom or whatever because I always get the best read in here and you start to game what you're doing and, and it's just no, that's no way to be. You should literally, you know, get on the scales, check it, okay, I know what's happening, all right, I can see the trend and then you carry on with the rest of the day, all right? It shouldn't be something that is just like the focus of any day and something that just controls your emotions, all right? I want to kind of break away from that. As always, I have a little mnemonic that I like to use, and this one is scale. So I don't know, I've made it really relevant. Um, it's not always easy, but I've managed to make it really relevant. So the S, first of all, set a, cons a consistent time, all right? So it's no good going weighing yourself at seven o'clock in the morning one day, weighing yourself at lunchtime the next day, nine o'clock in the evening the next day, 12 o'clock the next day, and all this kind of stuff. It's got to be 
a consistent time, all right? Now, it can be whatever kind of works for you, whether you've got access to the scales. Now, the best thing that kind of works for me is first thing in the morning, so the routine is literally out of bed, you know, you're naked, in, into the bathroom, do your little morning, wee wee or whatever, then get on your scale straight away. So your body will be the lightest that it will be at that point there. So it's, it's most of your food has been digested unless you had a bit of a late night binge or whatever. Um, you've had your little Jimmy Riddle, so you know, you're not carrying any excess water in your bladder, all right? And lots of energy in your body that's stored in energy may have been used throughout the night, okay? So, you know, you, you, it's about as accurate flatline body weight as you're going to get before you start eating and the rigors of that day are starting to take effect okay so make sure you set a consistent time and don't break from that you know all right you can fluctuate a couple of different hours but fundamentally it's the time in which you wake up plus one or two minutes to have a jimmy wee jimmy wee i don't know what jimmy wee is i just made that up uh, blended a couple of different sayings into one jimmy wee um have your little jimmy wee and then get yourself on the scales okay so it's a consistent moment in your day okay it might not might give or take 30 minutes like sometimes i'll get up at, at half four sometimes i'll get up at seven you know but what i'm saying is it's that that moment in my day that's consistent c close okay or brackets a lack of, all right? Just get your clothes off because obviously if you're wearing jeans, that's going to be very different if you're wearing a little pair of, of running shorts or, you know, if you're wearing your pyjama bottoms as opposed to a little pair of knicks, you know? So just, just get yourself naked, you know what I mean? And if clothes can change it so much, you know? A pair of jeans, a thick hoodie, a T-shirt, you know? And it's just it can just fluctuate massively, all right? So make sure that you've you've got no clothes on. Um, always use the same scale. So this is a really important one because I know of a couple of people that have got scales in different bathrooms and they'll check on one and then they'll be like, oh no, I don't, that's, uh, I've put on a bloody couple of pounds or whatever. Then they'll run into the next bathroom, get on another scale, it's like, oh, whew, thank God for that, I'm, I'm the normal weight now, you know? And it's like, no, you just, that <laughs> scale's obviously not calibrated to the other scales and you're gaming it again, all right? So make sure that you use the same scales every time so that you get a true you know, reading or a more accurate reading, all right? And uh, I've seen people before where, you know, you, all right, you might be traveling, okay? And you've got, we well, you set a scale at scales at home and then you, you're traveling around and then you end up weighing yourself away from home now now do it and 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 just keep checking in and, and and see how you're doing but just remember there will be some discrepancies between different types of scales okay so just just you know bear that in mind you don't that he about to throw yourself off the office block purely because you've put on a couple of pounds and actually it might just be a miscalibration in the scales that you're using okay so bear bear that in mind l is log your numbers okay so make sure you log it now i, I talk about this all the time awareness is the key to everything and if you're aware of what those figures are all right then you can start making changes to to uh to change it okay so make sure you're logging your numbers now for me i have a set a digital set of um scales so as soon as i set on the scales i set me as like person number one get on the scales measure myself it gives me a result Bing, bluetooth sit to my phone and i can track the progress remember we're looking for the trend rather than the actual that that moment in time okay so um you can stick it in a diary you can note it on a bit of paper or whatever just make sure that you're logging it so that you can track it next time otherwise you get on there and you go was i was i 88 kilos before i was 87 I can't remember or was 101 you know what i mean just just log it so that you know what that what the trend is and you can see what's happening and, and you don't have to rely on your memory too much and the e is evaluate periodically so what i mean by that is you know you've got to be looking at the trend so perhaps do a couple of weigh-ins before you start like bloody beating your head against the wall because you're depressed with what you're seeing or whatever you know and work out what those trend is and if it's coming down brilliant you know and if it's staying the same well you're not far off you know if you if you are increasing then you know we've got to do some big changes and 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 you know start start bringing it back down but you know you don't want it to just by measuring it you, you're going to stop it from just becoming erratic and piling on a ton of weight you know, because you because you're aware now, you 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 know you're much more likely to to do something about it. Okay, so just check it periodically and and, and evaluate it periodically is the is my uh, plan. You might check it 
every day. Every day is not great because you, you could say that that's been a little bit obsessive. Um, it's not long enough to see any real changes, but it's long enough for you to have some different fluctuations and all that kind of stuff. But maybe you measure it every day, but evaluate it at the end of every week. Or, you know, maybe you measure it every week and evaluate it at the end of every month or, you know, some something like that. And that will just allow to that will give you a trend rather than a snapshot in time. Um, in regards to like the routine, you know, I always advise people to do Monday morning, you weigh yourself after the weekend, because quite often, you know, people that wear themselves on a Friday, it's like, yes, amazing, lost two pounds, smash into the weekend and put those weight, that weight back on, okay? Whereas if you're weighing after the weekend, then, you know, you avoid that uh, that potential for just having an absolute week end, as in W-A-K end, instead of like a good Weekend, W-E-E-K. I'm sure you can work that out. <clears throat> I suppose it's a little bit like a roller coaster, you know what I mean? If you was to focus on every dip and every climb and drop and twist and spin and, you know, you're like, I know, this is just, it's just like chaos, you know what I mean? But just focus on the journey and, and getting from A to B and, you know, take all these little bumps and, 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 and knocks and, you know, ups and downs and the pips and troughs and all this kind of stuff, something in my eye, uh, as part of the journey, you know, and just don't obsess about each little one and, and that's a much healthier way of going about it. So what to do next? Okay, so a couple of things that you can do right now. You can establish your when, you can establish your where, and you can establish your how. You know, how often are you going to evaluate your progress? How often are you going to measure yourself? Where are you going to do it? You know, what time? All that kind of stuff. Um, get yourself a dedicated log, whether it's a piece of paper, a diary, an app, whatever it is, okay, some way of tracking it. And then as I always say, just consider sharing your progress with an accountability partner or someone else, you know, family member or whatever, because just sharing and recognizing that progress can be incredibly motivating. Now, if you're getting started or you want to get started with a new fitness and weight management program, you're probably going to want to know what kind of exercises to do, what kind of exercise is best for you to get started right now. And if that's the case, you want to watch this video where I talk about just that.